During his final State of the Island address, Governor Calvo was hating on the federal government. If the federal government had lived up to its promises to our people on the compact impact, or allowed us to economic freedom through the Jones Act, Jones Act and cabotage, heck, we can't keep the American airlines, but look what happened. We could get a bunch of Korean and Japanese airlines, they love to come in. Foreign labor restrictions, visa waiver restrictions, and other stifling federal policies, or provided equitable provisions for Medicare, Medicaid, EIT subsidies. Don't you think our financial position today would be very, very much different? Don't you think? This just months after he gushed to President Trump during a personal phone call. The governor basically saying Chamorro's the most loyal people ever. Like ever, ever. We are loyal. Our blood runs red, white, and blue. But the federal government continues in the same vein as the British Crown to impose upon us their will, their mandates, their taxes, their court orders without equal representation. The people of Guam have been more loyal to the United States in these last 100 years than our founding fathers were to their mother country in the four years before the revolution. Governor Calvo also bringing up compact impact costs and throwing Uncle Sam under the bus timely during this election year when his lieutenant governor is seeking higher office. The governor basically saying, it ain't our fault. The federal mandates that we welcome and host citizens of the freely associated states have cost our government just last year, 2017, nearly $150 million. The accumulated cost for the life of the compacts of free association on Guam is about $1.4 billion. And we have these prognosticators telling us, ha, ah, why we can't get things right? And why should the, why, maybe the federal government should take over? Folks, it's not us, it's not us, it's not us. Cell philosophy, in which our hero, Chris Barnett, shares random musings from a smartphone. Reminisce a little bit about my grandma. God rest her soul. I know she's not resting though. She was never resting. She was always working so hard. She's probably up there in heaven, like cleaning God's house and cooking for everybody because she loved to cook for everybody. And she was a miracle worker in the kitchen. She could feed like 50 people with one chicken. That's like a Jesus level Bible miracle right there. She'd take that one chicken and cut it into about 75 little tiny pieces. And as long as me and my cousins had three, four little pieces of chicken and kudu on our rice, we were good. We never ate the butt of the chicken, though, because my grandma would say, don't eat the butt of the chicken, because the chicken, they sweep their talkie with their tail. And I didn't realize till I was grown that she said that because the butt of the chicken was her favorite piece. Yeah, grandma be eating that chicken booty like groceries. And my grandma invented tough love. I mean, some of the things she said to us growing up, if you were to say that to your kids or your grandkids nowadays, it'd be like CPS life sentence, top story, KUAM news. One of my cousins broke up with his chick and he wanted to kill himself. And we lived all the way at Mariso, so my cousin drank two sips of Clorox. He was like, I'm gonna kill myself, I can't go on like this. And my grandma was like, if you wanna kill yourself, drink the whole bottle of Clorox so our trip to GMH will be worth it. It's a long drive, that's like $30 in gas money, you know? Or when me and my cousins would fight, we'd get into a fight. She would be like, you guys wanna fight, huh? Go to the kitchen and get the knife and just kill each other. I mean, can you imagine if somebody told her kids to just kill each other nowadays? Wow. But she just wanted us to put it in perspective, you know? Because we don't want to kill each other. We just wanted to beat each other up really bad. And my grandma, she would call me and my cousins United Nations. Yeah, she'd call us United Nations because we were like half white, half black, half this, half that. And we used to get bullied a lot growing up in Molesso because they didn't know we were Chamorro and we come home with black eye or scratched face and my grandma would say, huh, ah, they're gonna bully you? Bring them to the house and I'll show them my vagina where your mothers came out and then they'll know you're tomorrow. 
And I never did it, thank God, because, you know, I couldn't have my grandma, like, flashing her private parts to kids in the village, you know. She ended up on the sex offender registry. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore. It was a different time. I miss you, Grandma. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Adios.